gas. It's a fossil fuel that's been around for over 200 years, heating our homes, lighting our streets and helping provide one of Britain's most long-standing industries. We've come a long way since the launch of the Gas Light and Coke Company in 1812. The industry has been nationalised and privatised, evolving significantly from local gas works through to the introduction of natural gas and the birth of our company, Scotia Gas Networks, in 2005. We transport gas to 5.8 million homes and businesses, operating across the whole of Scotland as Scotland Gas Networks, as well as the south and southeast of England as Southern Gas Networks. Our job is to deliver a safe and reliable gas supply to the communities we serve, but that's not only what we do. We are aiming to be the UK's leading gas network in all areas. That's why our business focuses so much on pioneering the latest technologies and techniques to deliver gas more efficiently, more safely, more reliably and also more sustainably. As well as coming from fossil sources, there are also a number of different gases which can be made from sustainable and renewable sources. Together, these are known as green gas. Greening the gas that passes through our pipes is at the heart of our vision for an enduring and sustainable gas network. Green gas is a clean source of energy which can help our country meet its climate change and renewable energy targets. It can be produced from many different sources, including sewage, food waste and energy crops. One such example, which is particularly important to us and we are currently focusing on, is biomethane. The biogas process all starts with organic material. Organic material that can be reused and recycled to provide gas for the local community. This organic material is first of all directed to anaerobic digesters so that it decomposes. As it decomposes it produces gases. Methane is the gas that we require. Other gases are filtered from that so that we're left with a pure gas called biomethane. That biomethane is conveyed into the gas pipes and transported for heating and cooking. DIGCOT was an exciting project. It was the first project uh, undertaken in the UK for biomethane recovery. Biogas in its raw form was being produced at DIGCOT and it was being flared off waste energy just going up the chimney and smoke. We came along with our partners and recovered that biogas, bubbled it through water, recovering the methane and injecting it into local homes in the DIGCOT area. It gave us a fantastic amount of learning which we've now deployed on future projects. This project was officially opened in October 2010 and is able to provide gas to around 200 homes. The UK government has set some really tough legally binding targets to uh, reduce carbon emissions, those emissions that are known to cause climate change, and also to promote sources of renewable energy. And at Scotia Gas Networks we're really keen that we can help the government deliver those targets. We know that over the coming years the UK is going to be importing more and more gas, and there are questions over where that gas will be coming from and how much it will cost. But at projects like the ones at Poundbury and Didcot, we're guaranteeing that people are going to be supplied with sustainable, secure and also locally grown gas and that should make all of our customers very happy. The first commercial biomethane project in the UK is in Poundbury. It was officially opened by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales in November 2012. Poundbury is the first full-scale project in the UK demonstrating what we learned at Didcot can be scaled up to reduce the costs and produce an affordable product for local people. Customers will not see any difference in their gas quality or the gas prices as a result of the Poundbury project. The use of green gas means that the gas network has a more sustainable future than if we carried on just using fossil gas. But it also means that we can save money as we can continue using the gas network and our existing cookers and boilers rather than switching to other more expensive technologies and appliances. We can do all of this and still ensure that the national energy targets are met.
In order to get the most out of greening the gas, we need to make quite a few changes, some that are out of our direct control. Scotia Gas Networks is really excited about the prospects for growing the green gas business and getting more and more sustainable gas into our network, but there are still a number of barriers and hurdles that are holding back projects, making them more expensive and sometimes more difficult. So the key ask that we've got for the government is that they get together, work more closely with other departments and really try and resolve some of these hurdles that are holding projects back. One of the big issues we have is that the government regulations for the gas industry are based on traditional gas supplies from the North Sea. Green gas is slightly different to this North Sea gas, both in what it contains and also as it occurs at a much smaller scale. As a result, we have to spend a lot of money on unnecessary and expensive monitoring and control equipment. We also need the government to provide a stable investment framework to get people investing in these projects. The challenges with this process are all about regulation. This is not the same as bringing millions and millions of cubic metres of gas from the, from the North Sea into the UK. These are small local energy schemes and we must get the regulation and the industry looking more favourably on these schemes as they develop. Scotia Gas Networks can offer a full range of services. All our expertise at cleaning up the gas, investment in all the clean-up plant you see behind us, network entry facilities, we can offer the full package in a turnkey one-stop shop, which is unique to the UK industry, and that's what's making us the leading player in this field in the UK at the time. The beauty of green gas is the fact that there are so many different sources for it to come from, but as well as just biogas, we're also now looking at other sources of sustainable gas and getting them into our network. We're looking at things like hydrogen or synthetic gas, or even um, using excess wind energy and turning that into gas and putting it into our system. I'm really excited about the green gas initiatives we've got in SGN. I'm really proud to be part of the market leading developments and the first commercial project that we've installed in the UK. So SGN really is leading the way when it comes to green gas. Not only are we committed to playing our part in helping to move the UK to a low carbon economy, we can assist biogas developers to achieve this too. A greener gas network in the future will provide our homes with heating and cooking for many years to come.